Good morning. Today, as we look at uh, verses 1 through 26 of John 12, we find Jesus returning to Jerusalem. And yesterday, as we ended chapter 11, after the raising of Lazarus, Jesus had, had gone out, um, had, had left that area, and you know, gone out to the area around Ephraim, uh, near the wilderness, and had spent some time there, alone, or maybe not alone, I shouldn't say, but with his disciples and, you know, smaller crowds. But on this time, now it says six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany. And so this is Jesus coming back into Jerusalem um, just a few days before he is going to be crucified. Uh, <clears throat> so he comes, um, so it says six days before the Passover, this would be, you know, the day we call Palm Sunday. And he comes to the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead, Mary and Martha, this family, these friends. And it says they gave a dinner. Martha served, and Lazarus was there. And Mary took a pound of costly perfume and anointed his feet and wiped her, his feet with her hair. And, you know, the house was filled this, with this fragrant aroma. And the gospel writer John tells us that Judas was upset by this, the keeper of the purse, the, the treasurer. And he comments, you know, this was a waste of all of this, 300 pounds, you know, it's a huge amount of money wasted, you know. And, and Jesus says, well, she, has, she has anointed my body for death. And, you know, they don't really understand that. But, uh, you know, the, this was one of the spices, ointments, oils that, that the women most likely would have been bringing, you know, on that a week later, you know, on that day after the Sabbath as they were going to uh, the burial grounds where they thought that Jesus was. But... Mary had <clears throat> had uh, shown her appreciation for Jesus. You know, I mean, he had raised Lazarus from the dead. I mean, and given them back hope and life and a future. And um, you know, the change that he made in their lives by by raising Lazarus back. And, and in so many ways, you know, it was it was an act of worship. It was an act of of thanks. And. Um, and like so many other things that hap that Jesus did or happened to Jesus, people weren't excited by that. Verse 9 says, When the great crowd of Jews learned that he was there, they came not only to see Jesus, but to see Lazarus. You think about that. I mean, how could Lazarus walk around? I mean, I mean, people would have been clamoring. I mean, it would have been paparazzi would have been you know, hiding out in the bushes and the trees, and they'd have been all over the place watching for Lazarus. And I'm kind of sure that that was going on here too, because, you know, John tells us that the crowds came <clears throat> wanting to see these two men, to see the, the miracle worker and the miracle that had been done. And it's just a reminder here too that because people were, clamoring after Jesus and Lazarus, it was one more of the reasons that the chief priests wanted to put Jesus to death, but also Lazarus. Because Lazarus, alive, was a witness to the power, the majesty, the, the might, the, the godliness of Jesus. And because no one else had ever been able to do such a thing as, you know, raise a man from the dead, but it you know, gives light sight to the blind man. And I mean, these things that Jesus did were just not common. And, you know, it says that <clears throat> it was a count of Lazarus, <clears throat> excuse me, that <clears throat> many of the Jews were deserting the Jewish faith and believing and following Jesus. And um, so verse 12, the next day the crowd that had come to the festival heard Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. They took the palm branches <clears throat> went to meet him with the cry of Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And a little discrepancy here in John's gospel from the other gospel writers, it says that Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it is written. And again, a prophecy fulfilled. Look, the king is coming, sitting on the colt, on the donkey's colt. But <clears throat> 
in, in John's gospel, it's, you know, Jesus doesn't need the help. And in John's gospel, Jesus carries his cross all the way to, to Golgotha when we get to that point. But, and, but in the others, Jesus instructed his disciples, go and find this, you know, take this donkey, it'll be there. I mean, so in, in a way, I mean, Jesus found the donkey, the colt, regardless. He knew where it was. He knew where to send his disciples, or as John tells us, Jesus found the donkey. And again, you know, it's after the fact that John writes this and shows the fulfillment of the prophecies because it says the disciples didn't understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, glorified, that's resurrected from the dead. That's the glory of Jesus, not the death on the cross. Well, partly the death on the cross, but the resurrection, the power of the resurrection of God. This is, this is Jesus' glory that he, he heard God, he followed God, he, he completed the plan of God, and that's when he says it is finished. I mean, this is the glorification of Jesus. And it was then that many people began to understand and to believe. And it says that many who had been with him, so many of those people that had, had had been with Mary and Martha as they were mourning the death of Lazarus and had followed Jesus out to Lazarus' tomb, Many were, who had been with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb continued to testify. You know, they told the story. And, and that's what we do. And, you know, that, that song, I love to tell the story. I mean, it's true. I mean, what better story to tell than Jesus? To tell the story of, of Jesus' love and his glory and of God. And, 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 you know, if you tell the story to somebody that doesn't know it, you may be greeted with some skepticism, hopefully some belief. But when we tell that story to someone that believes, I mean, they're the ones, I mean, it's just like the song. To those who know it best, love it like the rest. And we do. We love to hear that story. And so, <clears throat> you know, John tells us again, it was because they had heard about Jesus raising Lazarus or they had seen it and they began to go out to, to find him. And the Pharisees just got to the point, I mean, what can we do about this? There's nothing we can do. The world has gone crazy for this guy. You know, I mean, what's the matter with him? I mean, this is, you know, just unbelief. And I mean, they knew they had to do something because of the radical change in the people and so many people beginning to follow. In verse 20, we have a little bit of a different approach here now that at the festival there were some Greeks it says foreigners that were there they came up to Philip one of the disciples and said we'd like to see Jesus and Philip goes to his brother Andrew and says you know uh, we got some people that want to go see Jesus and then Andrew went to Jesus and so I, I don't you know why didn't Philip just go I mean Philip was the one who went and talked to Nathaniel and brought Nathaniel to Jesus and but, you know, it's one of those things sometimes, you know, somebody asks you a question and you're pretty sure you know the answer, but you want to get back up. You want to get affirmation. And so Philip gets, goes to Nathaniel and, and, or to, to Andrew, rather, and they go to Jesus. And, you know, they ask, these Greeks ask to see Jesus. And, you know, there isn't a, you know, whether Jesus welcomed them or not, we don't know because Jesus' answer was, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And I've commented before about Jesus saying, the hour is not yet, well now the hour has come. He knows that these are going to be his final days. He knows that uh, everything is going to happen. And, you know, this is, we get the text here that sometimes we will hear at a, a funeral of a, a farmer, someone who tills the soil. I truly tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it. He says, whoever serves me must follow, and whoever serves me the Father will honor. So Jesus, you know, is somewhat in this response to Andrew and Philip, uh, Philip and Andrew coming with this request for the Greeks, you know, whoever serves me, whoever believes in me, whoever trusts in me, whoever comes to me, Jesus says, whoever, doesn't matter, slave or free, doesn't matter what color our skin is, any of those things, whoever comes to Jesus, 
will be served by God and honored.